Hello everybody, welcome to Red Toolhouse. Today, we're going to try to utilize some crazy slope right here. So uh, the camera's not picking it up, but there's a pretty steep slope right here beside our garden in front of the chicken church. But we want to expand the perennial garden into this area. And by using some raised beds like terraces, we're gonna take advantage of ground that would be pretty much useless otherwise. So come along, we'll give you some scrap and fire up the mill as well. Well, I'm trying to get the camera to pick up this angle, but so if I'm standing here all flat, that's the slope we're talking about. Now, right up here, about five feet up, there's a very, very tiny little, you can't even call it a cow path, you know, just a tiny little area here that's flat. <laughs> flat, yeah, right. Um, and then this right here is my trail that I used to walk up to the chicken church from the back of the house. You guys are standing right at the corner of the house. So just walk up here. So there's this triangle that's made of nothingness. And so it's steep. It has to be either mowed or use the weed eater on. It's here in the backyard. So it is protected mostly from the deer. They can walk in, but they're, they're really kind of avoiding this area. So I want to utilize that. I don't want to burn up my flat space that we do annuals in. I mean, I want to have more room for perennials. I've got some more of my thornless blackberries. We've got elderberry. We got Chinese wineberry. Obviously comfrey. I always want to put comfrey in these beds to, uh, to just supercharge that soil. But anyway, so making raised beds on a slope like this we're going to use some poplar that we mill. And you may think, wait a minute, doesn't poplar rot when ground contact? Yes, it rots very quickly. And that's actually what I'm embracing. I got plenty of poplar, so I'm fine with wasting that wood. And of course, it's not chemically treated, so when it rots down to nothing, it's not affecting the ground quality. And the way we build these, we can easily come in and replace those. And once the plants get established, then even if those boards fall away and even some of the front dirt falls away, then we're good to go, it'll be fine. But we're also gonna use some of our scraps from our chicken greenhouse, our greenhouse that we tore down, those uh, half inch conduit pieces, we're gonna use those for some stabilization. So we're gonna basically be using, utilizing a lot of scrap. It won't cost us a dime uh, other than the gas to run the mill, of course. So uh, I'm going to take some rough measurements here, get some ideas of what I need, because I want to do multiple up through here. And then the big trick will be figuring out how to get my compost up here. I can bring the tractor in and do that, but this is really soft right here. It stays soft this time of year. So uh, I'll probably be making ruts and may uh, raise the ire of the wife, but we'll see. But yeah, I think I can get maybe two or three nice little raised beds tucked right in against here. All right, so if I can still utilize my trail, little footpath I have there. Of course, I don't mind coming all the way over here against the fence. Oh yeah, I got plenty of room. That's 16 feet there. And then if I came up, since I'm gonna be doing vining type plants here with the elderberries, well, elderberry's not a vine, but the blackberry and the wineberry, then I wanna give it extra room. Another reason for utilizing the slope is a lot of those canes, of course, grow up and they want to fall over, uh, droop over. And what'll be great is they can droop over down the hill and have more opportunity for droop. I'm going to allow droopage. Yeah, eight feet. Yeah, I think, I think we'll look at doing two here. An eight footer and maybe a 12 footer. We'll go see what size uh, logs we have because I've got some poplar that needs to be milled. It's starting to get a little punky. Okay, so here's my log pile that I have and I keep forgetting I've got this big Virginia pine here that's been, she's been laying here a while. Maybe should take it first. This poplar, <clears throat> it doesn't like laying around. You can just see how the bark comes off. This, I milled this. This came from the hill just there beside the house. I milled this last summer. 
and it's getting a little long in the tooth. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Let's see what length we've got on this pine. You can see she's got a little bit of a funky dog leg there. A little funky dog. We've got some infestation already too. That dog leg is at 10. <clears throat> what does that leave us on the back side of the dog leg? It's almost 10. Well, I think I have my answer. I'm going to whack this in twain, make two logs, and that'll cut out that dog leg. That's the beauty of, of obviously leaving your logs longer and being able to uh, you know, cut what you need for the specific project. I want to do a 12 foot bed, but I can do a 10 foot bed, or I can get enough. 10 foot material that I can obviously just add on. Not a huge deal there. But being able to cut out this dog leg will allow me to maximize boards out of both of these logs versus going past to get 12 foot and getting a, you know, having a, a bad taper there where maybe only get, I don't know, probably only get 50% of the yield that I want if I try to saw out that taper or that dog leg. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put a whack in on it right now. Just love that fresh pine smell. All right, so here's gonna be the real test if this project can get done today. And that's to see if my 20 year old girl will start. She's been a little sick a little bit, y'all. I think she's due some glow plugs. She does not have a block heater. So it's kind of keep your fingers crossed and see if she'll start. That's right. Coyote gonna howl, baby. Oh! <laughs> All right, so I got that first log milled up, and I think I'm going to go ahead and build uh, what I've, uh, what I want to build with what I've got to see. Uh, does that make any sense at all? I think I'm going to build. Holy moly! I think I'm going to try to start building and just see what else I need milled because I, I hate to. The pine was in really good shape. I hate to um, mill it for something that I don't need right here, and then have a desire to use it for something else later, different size. So, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll get started here. <laughs> it's crazy. One of these days, I think Kelly and I are going to do 
two weeks of just vlog style video to show you guys a day in the life of the, the, the madness around here. So this is the thing about being self-employed. It's three hours later since I turned off the mill because um, my bank wanted a bunch of statements and records from 2022, so I had to get those to them. And then um, we had some gravel we needed to go get for the parking space, uh, the boys' parking space, because it's going to snow tonight. And I wanted to try to get some gravel in there. So all these things would just pop up when you least expect it. So back to the project at hand. <laughs> you guys didn't get to see that. One of these days, just take a camera around and follow us, and you guys would be like, what is wrong with these people? All right, so let's, um, I think what I'm going to do, I may start with the upper one first. I don't know. I can't drive my tractor up here to dump dirt down into it, my compost. Uh, it's just way too steep, so I'm going to have to shovel anyway. But um, it may be better off to start with the first one. That way I can stand on it to shovel into the next one. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> You ever have one of those days you just think, I just need to go back to bed? Seems to be happening a lot around here lately. So, I go through all this trouble to have a secondary camera phone so I can make sure I not destroy my iPhone. But I'm still using it for the mic and I've got it way back there safe, right? Where you guys are standing, because that's the camera that's shooting right now. And when I brought this second board in, I spun around to look for something and of course knocked it over right into the mud. So that phone is completely cased in mud. But the other phone I got for that very reason is, you know, high and dry. Anyway, all right, so this, these are 12 inch. These are true two inch by true 12 inch. And that made it, that made it pretty high <laughs> raised bed. Um, I don't know that I'll fill it all the way full simply because that's a lot of compost and then that's a lot of shear weight or, or you know, force going that way. Now I'm going to put my little wing walls on here and I am going to put a conduit down into the ground to hold them on. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that does to sturdy that up. But I'm going to do the top one first. And we'll... So the mud penetrated the receiver and I don't know if my bike, mic's going to survive. We'll have to try it again. But here, just basically putting these wing walls on, trying to make it level using cardboard to get the shape of the bottom one. And we'll do the same on the other side. I had some serious abs. Anyway, I think this is going to work. I think before I start on the next one, I want to fill this up and just see how much dirt it's going to take.
All right, so that's three bucket loads total. And this top is <laughs> a combination of chicken feathers. Now it's uh, four years of composted wood chips mixed with processing. And so the feathers and the blood and the eviscerate and these feathers will stay on top so they didn't get broken down very well this year yet. But this is some good stuff. And the first two buckets were just skimmings it's a pile of, of good soil that I have. I call pig trough skimmings. It's where I have this little coffer dam built for erosion control. So pig activity, manure, dirt, they're kicking off the hill, all that type of stuff gets collected in this area and I scoop it out with a tractor every so often. Oh, this is going to be nice. Now, I, of course, over-exaggerate Kelly's response to me tearing up the yard. She's obviously not a tyrant. And I try to do a good job in putting things back when I tear them up. So That ain't terrible. There'll be grass on it in no time. All right, so the second one obviously just built a bit smaller, smaller in all dimensions, and uh, one scoop of compost, the composted wood chips is what I put in there. That's how I was able to drive it down that slope. I would not have done that if that was a full bucket of this soil, because that would not be fun. But I got that in place. I hit some rock here, so these things are not as deep in the ground as I'd like them to be. But we'll see how it goes. Um, it may slide down the hill, it may not. But as you can tell, we're, we're running out of daylight quick and I got things, get things put up. It's supposed to start snowing here in an hour or so. So that delays planting a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I pray everyone have a great week and thank you so much for watching. Take care.